Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you, and today we're going to continue our study in John 18. And today we're going to pick up in verse 19. And this is um, a, a section where Peter has just denied Jesus. They've arrested him, brought him into the temple. Um, Peter has denied him, and now we switch to a scene where Jesus is being questioned. Um, it says this, Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at, or at the temple, where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. Jesus is, is basically pointing out here that he's never hidden anything from them. That he's never tried to keep them from uh, from knowing what he was teaching. He wasn't. He, he's not trying to create some kind of um, secret insurrection or or any um, any kind of uh, covert operation. He's doing everything that he does publicly. He's preaching in the synagogue, in the temple, um, and and sharing. So nothing has been hidden. So he knows that. What they're trying to do here has a has an agenda behind it, obviously. So he he points that out in verse twenty two. It says, "When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face." Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. You see, Jesus is beginning. He, he's being mistreated here, and and he's and he's being. Um, basically set up um he he's he's going to be lied about he's going to be uh, you know, all the things that the old testament prophets like isaiah prophesied would happen to him is is now coming to pass it's happening even what jesus prophesied about himself is coming to pass that um n that he's going to be mistreated he's going to be beaten he's going to be spat upon he's going to be um whipped and ultimately crucified but and, and and all of this is done because two two reasons from an earthly standpoint it's being done because of jealousy and because of envy and because of fear uh, that Jesus is taking away the power of the religious elite in this in this case and um, and disrupting what they have built up what what the the religious structure that they have established that has given them great power and, and great uh, influence even under the oppression of the Roman government. And they, they have enjoyed great power and strength in this. But also, and the ultimate reason, is because this is what God had planned from Genesis chapter 3 all the way moving forward. This is what's been on God's mind all the way through. And when we look back at the Old Testament and read through the Old Testament, we can see foreshadowings of this. We see it through the, how the prophets are treated. We, th we see it through uh, things that happen to uh, characters such as Jonah, where Jonah is um, you know, sent to Nineveh to, to share the, the good news of God with them. And, and on his way, he gets caught. He, he gets, you know, caught up in in his own sin, his his own concern, but ultimately God uses him as a demonstration of what the death, burial, and resurrection will look like, and 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 so um, he he's thrown over the over the boat into the into the water and swallowed up by the fish and stays in the fish for three days, and on the third day he is. He is resurrected onto the beach from the from the fish, and and it's just a beautiful picture of what what God is thinking about all the way along, right? It, you you see this in the life of Joshua, you see it in Moses, uh, you see it in Abraham, you see it in David. Is foreshadowings and pictures of what of what God is talking, is thinking about, and and it's being lived out by these characters in the Old Testament. Uh, but ultimately will be fulfilled through Jesus. And so when, in verse 23, it says, If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why do you strike me? Then, then Ananias 
sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. You see, they don't know what to do with Jesus. They just know they need to get rid of him. They just know that, that he is a problem. And, and in this world, here's, here's, I think, something important to take out of this piece of scripture. And that is, in this world, there are forces that are against the work of God, that are against the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom. And those forces are going to use anything that they can to, um, to do that work. And, you know, in Ephesians chapter 6, it says that our enemy is not flesh and blood, but it is the principalities and powers of this dark world. And those principalities and powers of this dark world are the devil and his demons. But the devil and his demons have control or have influence in the minds of people who are not led by the Spirit. And therefore, people who are not led by the Spirit are led by those principalities and powers. And we can begin to look at those people as our enemy, when in fact it's not them that is our enemy, it is the power that is controlling them and, and influencing them and causing them. That's what's happening here is that the, the, the enemy has taken over the minds of these people and, and filled them full of rage and envy and jealousy and, and anger and all of these, all of these fruit of the spirit of the dark side, right? In, in the spirit the, the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, are love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. But the fruit of the dark side, the fruit of the enemy, are things like anger and bitterness and rage and malice and slander and all of those kinds of sin that, that will, because of who we are influenced by, we will produce fruit in keeping with that influence. So if you're being influenced by the enemy, then you're going to be influenced to be angry, to be vengeful, to be uh, filled with malice and slander and jealousy and uh, all of those things. But if you're filled with the Spirit, then, then you have a different level. You have love, you have joy, you have peace, you have self-control that comes that 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 is strengthened that is given the strength of that is given from the holy spirit and that changes everything it changes our reaction to the world around us it changes how we see the world around us and how we judge what people are doing around us because we're no longer looking at the person saying oh this person is bad this person is doing that no it's not that person it's the spirit that is controlling that person just like it's the spirit that's controlling us if we are being controlled by the Holy Spirit, then we will act in accordance with that, and we will uh, look like God's servants. We will we will do what God called us to do, just as the world will do the opposite of that if it's controlled by the evil spirit. So that's what's happening in this passage, and I think it, it reminds us that the world is going to hate the things of Christ. It's going it, it, to because the devil hates the things of Christ. Christ has put him to death already, and, and he don't like that. God cast him out of heaven, and he doesn't like that. And so his only, his only mission is to still kill and destroy. That's what John 10 says. But because we follow Christ, Christ said, my mission is to come and to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. And the way we live that is by being filled with and then produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit in us. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for that fruit. We thank you for this reminder. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear your word and to be influenced by your word so that we can represent you well. Help us to keep in mind that our enemy is not the flesh and blood of people around us, but the, the principalities and powers of this dark world that are influencing them. And so we can come against them with the weapons of uh, that are not of this world, but are, have divine power to break down those strongholds. And, and we can use prayer and love and joy to, to do battle against the enemy. And so we just thank you, Lord, for that incredible opportunity you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for being with me, everybody. We'll see you soon.